Chris Broussard on First Things First. All right, Broussard, the NBA sets return on July 30th. But over the last couple of days, we've been hearing rumblings of players considering sitting out in a stand for social justice, along with other concerns surrounding health and money. Well, last night, the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, weighed in. He said, quote, I can only say it may not be for everyone. It will entail enormous sacrifice on behalf of those players and for everyone involved, the coaches, the referees. Listen, it's not an ideal situation. My sense is we're going to be able to work through most of those issues during the next few weeks. But as I've said, we also have an arrangement with the Players Association where if a player chooses not to come, it's not a breach of his contract. We accept that. Nick, I'll start with you. The first part of what Adam Silver had to say. What do you think about how he addressed the players' concerns? Listen, I, the, the single biggest reason I am still extremely confident that the NBA is going to resume on July 30th as scheduled is because unlike we have seen in other sports, most notably what's going on with Major League Baseball right now, instead of an air of mistrust between the players and management or the players and the commissioner. There is immense trust between the players and management and the players and the commissioner. Not only trust that they are being honest with each other, but trust that their priorities on real life issues are aligned. Back when the NFL was dealing with the controversy surrounding players kneeling during the anthem, that was legal, according to the NFL CBA, for players to do, and it was still wildly controversial. It's actually not allowed by the NBA CBA, but Adam Silver recognized the moment and said, we're going to talk to our players and figure out what's right. A couple years ago, there was a, not an uproar, but a minor discussion about whether or not the term owner should be used when we talk about sports teams. You know what the NBA came out and said? Let's just move towards calling what have traditionally been called owners, governors. Is it the biggest deal in the world? No. Is it the top priority on anyone's agenda? No. But it's something that would matters at least somewhat to some of our players. It costs us nothing. So why not just do it? Because they feel, the players feel it would be the right thing to do. And, and the league might actually agree with them. And so because of that, Wilds, I'm not really concerned that some to, you know, team executive or league executive is going to say something way out of pocket about these protests. I don't think Adam Silver is going to do something to set the league back. And I think <clears throat> the players genuinely, for the most part, Wilds, trust that the commissioner is aligned with them on all these issues together. And I think that's the most important part here. I agree. And on the player side, I just want to take a moment to talk about Chris Paul and Chris Paul's leadership. You know, he's dealing with so many issues right now, more, maybe more than any other uh, Players Association president, and he has to play. So the idea that he's talking about the safety of the players, we're talking about social justice initiatives, we're talking about how the logistically the bubble will work, Broussard, and on top of that, Chris is going through and looking all, at all of that, and then on top of that, he's going to have to suit up and play, I think is just an, an immense, he's shouldering an immense amount of responsibility. And I think it's just kudos to him to be able to keep this uh, restart on track with all of the responsibilities that he has. Uh, you both made very good points, and, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. There is great trust between Adam Silver and the Players Association or in the players themselves. And that is very good, and, and, and Adam has earned that respect. Uh, I do think, and I do like the fact he said last night this hasn't gotten a lot of play, but that when they're in the bubble in Orlando, the league is going to bring in speakers to speak with the players about ways that they can positively impact their communities. I hope those speakers include educators, uh, economists, entrepreneurs lawmakers and people that run police departments. So I think that's a great idea. I think you should consult the players and some others about the right people to bring in. All that said, I do think there's more that Adam Silver and the NBA can do for sure. Number one, you brought up the national anthem, uh, Nick, and, and you're right. I don't think players will kneel at this point because they believe that Adam and the NBA have their back. However, I still think Adam Silver should get rid of the rule 
that you have to stand during the national anthem. We saw the U.S. Soccer Federation recently got rid of that rule. One, players should be able to do whatever they want during that time. But two, if players do decide to kneel, and I do think during the national anthem that is still the most powerful statement they could make, more so than locking arms, raising fists, or what have you, because it's associated now with Colin Kaepernick and with the protest of, for social injustice. If they do decide to kneel, he could be embarrassed because I don't think he would you know, pull rank and, and try to find players or anything like that. I think he would let it go. So it could make him look a bit weak. So I think he needs to get rid of that rule. Secondly, and I, I believe that the league will do something in the future. I have no doubt about Adam's commitment to fighting social injustice. And they're, I assume, trying to come up with ideas and putting things together. But we have seen the NFL, and I know they've kind of been forced into it, but they have committed $250 million. If you include the $100 million or $90 million last year, a couple years ago, that's basically $350 million to fight social injustice and systemic racism over the next 10 years. Not a huge amount of money, relatively speaking, but it still means a lot to those groups that, that in the grassroots organizations that will be fighting against these things. I'd like to see the NBA do something similar, if not even bigger. I know that Inspire Change organization and player, the Players Coalition that got that money from the league, they have done a lot. They have been in Florida and other states changing laws. The money they're giving to these organizations is really helping things. So I, I think the NBA needs to do some of that as well. It's a great point, Broussard. Nick, quickly, I wanted to ask you about the other thing Adam Silver was talking about, about players not being in breach of their contract. Should they not show up to play at the NBA's restart? What do you make of that? Yeah, I don't think that's only about, in fact, I know that's not only about what's going on with the nationwide protests and the epidemic of police brutality. That's also about the legitimate health concerns of subjecting yourself potentially to exposure to COVID. And we've seen that while certain folks have been asymptomatic, Von Miller, who's in amazing shape, said it was the worst thing he's ever been through. But it, it's also the aspect of the minimum length of time, if you go to Orlando, that you are away from your family is seven weeks. And while Jenna Broussard, we've all, because of work, had to be away from our family for at least a couple weeks at a time, when I lived in LA and my family lived in Houston, I went back almost every weekend, even if it was just for 36 hours, because it was brutal not being able to see your wife and kids. And folks say, well, NBA guys travel all the time, not for a two month stretch. So I, Kevin, I do think it'd be totally legitimate. And I wouldn't judge guys if they say, I, at no point when I signed up to be an NBA player did I sign up to not be with my wife and children or significant other or whomever for t a two month stretch. I know certain people do it. Guys that work on oil rigs do it, military members do it. But those guys know they were signing up for that going into it. So I think, Kevin, I think it's critical that Silver has said, if you don't wanna go, you don't have to go and you're not gonna be penalized other than that you're not gonna get paid. Yeah, well, not getting paid is, you know, if that's not considered a penalty, but the way that the contracts are working out here for start, it's really just, I would describe it as weird. So Trey Young's team's not going, he's getting paid. LaMarcus Aldridge is having surgery and his team's going, he'll get paid. If I was on the team and I said, hey, I just don't wanna go, I wouldn't get paid. So I don't know if this is going to, to uh, surface more and, and be negotiated again, but there, it feels, I don't know, sorry, the only word I have for it is weird. Well, they, they're really only getting paid for those eight games in the regular season. Playoffs is a share. And, and remember, they've been paid their, most of their money for last season. That's the difference between them and baseball is that baseball, if the players sat out in baseball, they'd be forfeiting their entire year's salary. NBA players have made most of that already. All right, Broussard, you brought up baseball. We're going to transition and talk a little bit about it with the MLB season up in the air. Our very own Tom Verducci will step by to discuss the next logical step. A little baseball next on First Things First.